Hi there, welcome to my latest video. Well, what I have here is a 10 year old, maybe 12 year old at this point, HP Pavilion Model 23, all in one computer. And it was my wife's computer until I upgraded her to a more modern one that I later upgraded, which you've seen a video on, uh, prior to me even starting my channel, or at least putting videos up there that were for the public anyway. Well, it still works. I even upgraded it to Windows 10 at some point. However, the problem that we have is it runs extremely slow. It has only a 100 meg Ethernet built into it, and it only has a hard drive, which is a rather low performance hard drive, to say the least. Well, what I'm going to do today in this video is I'm going to upgrade it to a solid state. I have this 480 gig solid state drive from Team Group. So I'm going to put this in there to replace the hard drive, which I believe it has a 500 gig hard drive in it right now. And since it has a working, two of them actually, USB 3.0 connectors on this side over here, I'm going to take this adapter that will allow us to convert USB 3.0 to a full one gig ethernet. And I'll show you the test results before I actually do it, and then again after I actually do it. And we'll see how all of these performance measurements pan out. So with that, let me get started with this and stick around to the end of the video, or at least toward the end, and you'll be able to see what the final results are in terms of the performance improvement that I get out of this. And the idea here is, I wanna be able to give this to a family member of ours that really doesn't have a computer at all that does anything significant. And this will only be used as a home office type PC, and it'll be much better than the one that the person currently has. So hopefully it all works out, and we come out of it with a nice working PC that they'll be able to get a few more years of, It'll never support Windows 11. Windows 10 are good for another four or five years. So let's get started. I'm starting off by running Crystal Disk Mark just to get an initial measurement of how fast that internal hard drive currently is. I'm then going to move on into iPerf 3, which will tell me how fast the network is. I also made sure all the patches and latest updates to Windows were installed before I moved on and copied the hard drive. I then used a standalone version of a Cronus to actually do a clone of the disk drive from the hard disk over to the SSD that I was going to install to replace it. Now this was important because it was a tool that allowed for replication of every component and sector within the particular drives. There are many other tools, however, that would work just as well that probably you could get for little or no additional charge. Personally, I've always liked this tool, even though it's somewhat costly, depending on whether you get a good sale or not, because it has always done exactly what it's supposed to do, copied everything without any errors whatsoever. Uh, I believe it should work. So now what I'm going to do is open this guy up and we'll do a switch. We'll take out the hard drive and we'll put inside the SSD. Hopefully there's nice uh, adapters that I can fit appropriately. Otherwise, I could just double side tape this inside the drive cage. We'll see. Stay tuned so you can see the final results and performance changes at the end of this video. Okay, to open up this uh, all-in-one from HP, there are a total of five screws we have to remove. Now, every model of this is somewhat different, so it may be different for the particular one that you have. This one has a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, all the way down at this end here, on the handle on the bottom, and on the opposite side. These three are captured screws, so when we take them out, they will not come out all the way. In addition to that, we may have to loosen them a second time as we remove further screws, because they seem to be somewhat dependent upon each other in terms of leverage. Like right now, this one's giving me resistance. Chances are because I have to take the one on the handle off. These two bottom ones remove completely, so don't lose them. Now the entire handle does not come off. There's two splits in it. There's a split here, and there's a split here. So we gotta pull it up. You could use your fingernails or use a small, dull screwdriver. If you have an iFixit kit, there is a plastic tool in here that is very helpful for this. Since this thing is just like a big laptop, that's what this is for, to take covers off of a laptop. So you can take this and you can pry these up. 
without damaging them. And then we have to make sure that these other screws have come loose enough to remove the entire back panel. If you're doing it right, you should start seeing a split that occurs right here between the front bezel, in this case a silver painted bezel, and the back cover. And you may have to just sort of split it apart. There's snaps that are angled at the top. So as we pull this off, we'll hear snaps occurring. And then it should come off at the very front, like that. Now the full back panel is off. Here's the hard drive. Looks like a full three and a half inch hard drive. There's a single screw here we have to remove. Again, it's a captured screw. So once it's up enough, you can now wiggle this out. Now, if you want, you could remove the screws from the connector, but you don't have to do that. If you grab this handle here and push backwards, make sure you don't hit this too hard back here. So be very gentle and wiggle it out. It should come straight out. And there's the hard drive, it's been removed. Now my plan is not to put this cage back. So let me take the SSD that we have preloaded as a copy of that hard drive. Take it off of the adapter that I used to connect it to the USB. And you'll see the same exact USB connectors here. And they will go in directly to this. However, there is a gap between here and the base. I measured it out. And it looks like it's probably about six millimeters. So I took a ruler, millimeter ruler, put it in here, push this in a little bit, and then I measured the gap, and it comes out to just about six millimeters on the ruler scale. So what I did was I took some double sided backed tape and I put them together. These two can come apart at any time, but that's okay. I just wanted to have enough of these together to equal six millimeters. And if we measure it out, it comes out to just about six millimeters. I'm going to remove the double-sided tape from the bottom piece that I put on here. And I'll put this on the chassis. So let me take this out. And if we look at it very carefully, I don't want to cover these vent holes. So it'll go right underneath here, toward the back end, right over here. So if I put this here, that should give us just enough elevation to put this in and have it flat. Let's see if that works. There we go. Then I can take some long tie wraps and I'll wrap it through here to try to get it up underneath here. I may have to do that first before I put this in. That way it's not easily going anywhere. Let's get this thing back together. I got to dip it in from the front because you see there's little clips here all along the edge here. It's also all along the side too, but those will have to snap in. So I'll start by dipping it in from the front and then I'll push it down. And you have to do this sort of in combination. Let's snap these back down. You have to tighten the screws and then it'll force the back cover back on. These three screws in particular, it'll force the back cover back on. You see it lowering down right over here, for example. Oh, it has to go down a little bit more. Let's see if we can uh, close any gaps that are here. So we take this and sort of snap it in place. On both sides. Right here's a big gap. Snap it in place until you hear the clicks. And it's locked in place. Make sure that's on both sides. It looks like that's snapped down. Tighten these screws just a little bit more. And then let's put the two bottom screws back in that are on the handle part here. And that's it. Let me stand it back up. And we'll make sure that it comes up and works. Okay, now I have it set up with the power and uh, keyboard and mouse. Let me power this on. See what we got. Okay, that's the BIOS. Oh, I see the Windows wheel turning. That's a good sign. See what happens here. Wow, there we go, right into Windows. That was a lot faster too. Let's log in. And there we are. Let me try, I don't have it connected to the network right now. Let me try testing the disk speed now, compared to what we had before. Crystal disk mark. 
it's a lot more responsive. Zoom in here, and there we go. Wow, <laughs> the first read speed number is fantastic, 511 megabits per second. That's got to be, I don't know, at least four times as fast as we were before. But at the end of this video, I'll show the actual charts to show the delta between the two. Zoom ahead now. Wow, those are some impressive numbers. Unbelievable. It definitely has a SATA 3 controller on this motherboard. I wasn't 100% sure about that. I suspected based upon its age it should, but you never know. Because those are definitely SATA 3 numbers for an SSD. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this network adapter. That'll use a USB 3.0 to convert to a one gigabit network. Because as you may recall from the previous test, the network speed was only 100 megabits at best. So I'll put this on. It will connect over to the side here. And I'll connect the network cable to this and uh, we'll see what the performance is of that. Okay, what I have loaded here is iPerf3. Let me run it. Again, it's going to use my server to run this. Let's see what kind of numbers we get. Wow, look at that. 940 megabits per second. 42 actually in a couple of cases. That's extremely good. So let me go ahead now and uh, put this together in a couple of charts and uh, we're then done. This chart shows the performance improvement on the disk after replacing the hard disk with an SSD disk. And this chart shows the performance improvement after upgrading to a USB 3.0 1 gig interface.